Hi everyone, this is just a fairly short video I want to do on the Wago Box by Connect Box. Um, this is the 2214 Wago Box, it's a fairly recent one off of the line and you may be thinking it's just a typical Wago Box like one of the older ones, but there are some differences and we need to be aware of what these differences are, especially if we're going to start using maybe the more recent Wago devices in our original boxes. So if, like me, you may have a pile of the original boxes, because you may have just gone to town with getting them, um, and like stacks of the old Wagos, but you might start now being investing in the newer ones, such as the 221s and the, the uh, 2273s, which, you know, they're, they're pretty pretty slim profile now, and that's where the change really starts. So I've got some of the older Wagos that we remember. So these are the old, as I look, on the side of it, what were the numbers here? They were the 773s, which were these push types, which we know. And then we had the lever one, which I still use most of the time now for testing purposes, which was the 222s. But when we actually look at these, imagine if we were to stand them up in a line, so in fact, uh, like this fashion, they're actually all the same height off of the floor, the same width. So when it came to enclosing these devices, the original Wago box was pretty much enough in that inserting them into this entry here was pretty good regardless of the rating or the type. And this actually, uh, I've got the instructions here, this probably would say that it came for these two types of devices. Have a look. Yeah, so for the 222 and the 773 type. And by complying with that and installing these devices as an enclosure, we had achieved the maintenance free requirements, which were of BS5733. Now, the very original uh, Wago boxes I've got here, they actually don't even display the symbol. That's how long I've had these ones because straight off of the line, these didn't have the MF symbol because the MF symbol wasn't a problem. It was only when some other idiot companies started to introduce them that then suddenly Wagabox had to kind of run around uh, and explain why they were fully compliant with the requirements of BS5733. The requirements of 5733 include the need to consider vibration. And this is where we start to get this problem. Now, if I have this original Wago box, but I swap out the older device types for these newer ones, maybe these 2273s or these new 221s, they are much thinner profile. And you see, if I stand these up, they're not the same with each other. And so we just can't put these into these enclosures and expect them to do the same thing. Similar with the 221s. The 221s, if I just bend this, if we put that in there, there is a much larger space compared to the old 222s that we would have put in the same position. So to fix this, there's been a slight adjustment. Now, the first thing is, as I said, I've got the new connect box here. And so this is specifically for the 221s. And that means you'll see there, I have three slots, but the 221s, this type specifically, now fit very nice, try not to mess this up, in this enclosure, and that will still achieve full compliance with BS5733. No movement. Obviously, if I was to try to put these in this enclosure, that wouldn't fit, and this would be too thin. So that's why the new Wago box by Connect Box is specifically for the model 221s here. Now, what if we wanted to use these new types, the 2273s or the 221s in the older enclosures or the XL enclosures? Well, they actually make, and I'll, I'll, I'll take some snapshots of it, but I've got a little pamphlet here. And they do sell these little Uh, Wagga box adapters. So there's one for 221 connectors and one for 2273 connectors with a little illustration of them being put in to allow the smaller profile can, uh, Wago to be installed into the larger enclosure space. 
Uh, and don't forget, there's also the fixing button there. Now, I spoke to Connectbox at the most recent Alexa exhibition, and we're trying to discuss this further. And the main concern really is they don't package the, the mounting button here or these inserts with the connect boxes because obviously most likely we may not need them and then there'll be excessive wastage and that's just an ethical question so they are a additional resource now some suppliers are throwing in the button with the the wireway box as part of the deal uh you know which is obviously a completely fine that's just a decision that the merchant has made but if you are going to be installing a Wargo box, and you're not going specifically for the 2214 for your 221s. If you're going to install them in the older Wargo boxes or the XL Wargo boxes, then these newer devices have varying profiles, and you'll need to consider getting these inserts to allow maintenance free to be achieved. And that's the primary concern here. Now, if we're not looking for maintenance free, then there's not too much of a concern. But this, this new box does have maintenance free, and if you're planning on using the I don't have any of the ones that do have maintenance free on them, but if you do, are planning on using an old Wargo box that has maintenance free still on it, and you're going to say, oh, it's maintenance free because it's got that symbol, it will say in the lid that you must follow the instructions for the installation, and it will tell you, or if you look at the the, the, uh, the whole side is where they sell these smaller profiles, that these enclosures will need those inserts to allow that space to be reduced to avoid any movement in there. All right? Um... I'll just click. I'll just uh, cut this, and I'll just show a couple of um, uh, captures on the website just to go through this further. So we're now on the Connectbox website, and we can see here they've got the two to one four junction box and all the packaging here, the XL box. If we go to, uh, let's just check this one out. The two to one four. You can see it's clearly illustrated with just the two two ones in those compartments there. So they're not pushing the 2273s. Now, I don't know if the 2273s have their own specific enclosure in design or coming out. I do not know. But it's got here, compliant with 6067022 and 5733 when used with the 221 connectors used in accordance with the instructions. If we go to a accessory here, you'll see we've got the mounting button there as a separate item. Then we have these two adapter packs, 2214s, 2273s. So the 2214 is the, the new common lever type. And you can see that these have been inserted into the two. You know, is this enclosure is one of the older Wargo box enclosures, or maybe it's one of the XL ones. So we don't have the three slots that we had from the 221 box here. We don't have the three. We've only got the two. And so we've used this adapter pack to shrink the space and that prevents vibration on that 221 and that's needed otherwise it won't comply with the requirements of maintenance free enclosures. So that's just a little thing that you need to consider and again these little adapter packs aren't often prepackaged with this kit because it would be plastic wastage etc and so they are heavily trying to raise awareness of this at the event so if you do go down to an event have a little chat with them and just watch you know speak to the Connectsports people and ask them if they're doing anything else in the future to help help improve this, or if they're going to package these together, or if you can buy them together, uh, what their what their um, preferred methods are. I mean, cost wise, it's it's not it's not extortionate, but it is something that we can easily forget um, on the job. This is the two two seven three. You can see the same principle here. So this adapter pack has shrunk the space to avoid any vibration. This kind of movement there. On the actual connection which could then work this loose and just to kind of finish I've got here a little cutout from BS5 733 2010 amended to 2014 and it's got here section 14.5 this is this is not saying this is the exact problem but this just kind of highlights the need to consider movement in the enclosure and there's a little section here in 14.5 terminals for use within the maintenance free accessory and down further it just mentions that terminals shall have long-term connection capability conformity shall be checked by the following test the terminals will be subjected to a long-term connection test at rated current for a period of 1512 hours plus or minus five hours 
The terminal will be connected and secured as per the instructions. Then it says further down here, 14.5.3, the terminals shall be resistant to the effect of vibration. Conformity shall be checked by inspection and the following test. The accessories will be subjected to a sinusoidal vibration. The severity will be a duration of 30 minutes, an amplitude of 0.35 millimeters, the frequency range being 10 hertz, 55 and 10 hertz. So that's changing frequency range. The sweep rate will be approximately one octave per minute. Three tests will be carried out on the terminals in the three major planes through the terminal left to right, through the terminal top to bottom, and through the terminal front to back. And the tests will be carried out using conductors having the smallest and the largest normal size according to their rated current. So this just stresses the need to ensure the integrity of the connection for the life of the installation. And no doubt that having these smaller connections that Vargo are now producing in these larger enclosure spaces is the primary concern here. Therefore, these little ad adapter packs are there to stop that vibration. And that's the key problem here. All right. Um, yeah, I'll end this video now. Cheers.